Our next speaker uh, is Dr. Rob uh, Zobel from Federal Highway Turner for Bank. Uh, Dr. Zobel, uh, he's uh, the Long-Term Bridge Performance Program Coordinator. Rob. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you all uh, for the opportunity to come and talk to you a little bit about the Long-Term Bridge Performance Program. Um, hopefully everyone here has heard a little something about the program. I don't have enough time really to go into great detail uh, of the various things that we have done in the past. What I am going to talk about is just to give you a, a quick idea of where we are in the program, and then I'm going to spend a good amount of time giving you a demonstration of LTBP's Bridge Portal. Hopefully everyone has heard of that. If you haven't, um, you will see it today. Um, currently, at this point in time, we essentially have two separate contracts for the long-term bridge performance program. One contract, we have four various contractors there, and the other one, um, we have one contract. Uh, one contractor. That is the uh, contract that we've had since the program started back in 2008 with, with Rutgers. Uh, university, that contract is actually going to be up next September, I believe. And we have an additional multi-contractor contract, an IDIQ contract with PSI, Pannoni, PB, and Michael Baker. And just to give you a quick idea of some of the things that uh, these various contractors are doing, uh, Rutgers, they're doing a lot of work in data-driven deterioration modeling, also the development of the bridge portal. They've been doing quite a bit of work in the mid-Atlantic area as far as data collection, something that we call legacy data mining. Uh, some of you may have even been in contact with some of our contractors. The legacy data mining is a process where we're going out to individual states throughout the country and collecting um, all kinds of documentation on a subset of bridges in different geometric uh, regions throughout the country in order to help us to better understand uh, bridge performance and also in order to help us to select bridges for long-term uh, uh, data collection out in the field. Um, we're also working with Rutgers and our NDE lab at the development of a drone specifically for the long-term bridge performance program. Um, at this point, really more as a uh, quick pre-screening tool and then deploying other technologies, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, as far as actual uh, date, well, the other, the other contractor that is also doing legacy data mining is PSI. Um, the work that PSI has done on legacy data mining is now complete. They had four different clusters that they were collecting information um, on various bridges in those four clusters. Rutgers is responsible for um, 10, 10 clusters and also 10 corridors. So they're collecting a lot more information. Um, as far as actually going out into the field, collecting data on bridges other than the work that Rutgers has done, um, we, have, we have two uh, clusters in the Mid-Atlantic region that Rutgers has been out to on several different occasions, collected visual inspection data, and that visual inspection data is enhanced visual inspection beyond what's typically done biannually. Um, and again, this is for research purposes, so it is definitely um, an enhanced visual inspection. Along with that, they've done a lot of non-destructive evaluation in those two clusters. Um, we uh, have been collecting visual inspection data over the past year and a half or so in northwest and southwest clusters, also in two in the uh, Gulf states. So that's, that, that gives you an idea as far as data collection. Pannoni has been doing a lot of work for the long-term bridge performance program in terms of um, technical support for the program. So they've done a lot, a lot of uh, uh, various things. One of those being, um, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna probably skip through a few of these, one of those being the um, acquisition. Has anybody in here heard of the rabbit or not heard of the rabbit? Yeah, quite a few people have probably heard of it. I'll show you a couple of pictures of it. Um, for our data collection that we're getting ready to initiate this next year on a national basis, particularly for assessing reinforced concrete bridge decks, 
um, in conjunction with Rutgers, Turner Fairbank, uh, and Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center, we developed the rabbit. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We have two prototypes. We're in the process right now with Pannoni, the very last item there. Um, we're in the process of um, acquiring four additional commercialized versions of the rabbit specifically for that national data collection effort that we'll be initiating later this later. Uh, likely it will be probably about this time next year. Um, our data collection contract, we hope to um, award probably around May or June, and then it'll take a little bit of time for the, that contractor to get up to speed. So I expect probably about this time next year. Um, again, I'm not going to go through specifics on the data collection. I want to talk a little bit here about the rabbit. Um, this does look a little bit different than the uh, prototype version that we've been using out in the field. One of the primary differences is, let's see, we can see over, over here. Um, instead of having a van that the rabbit sits in, we went with a trailer system. And one of the main reasons for that is um, it was difficult to get the rabbit in and out one of those vans. It's, it's uh, quite high up off of the ground, and we only had two tracks that the rabbit would run up and down on, and those things aren't really inexpensive. So we decided that we'd rather go with the uh, command center using a trailer that has the whole back end that flips down so we have a complete ramp for it. Um, in the back of the trailer system, over here, that's where the rabbit is housed. In the front, we have a uh, air conditioned and heated space. That's the computer operations center. It essentially takes two people to run the rabbit. It could probably be done with one person, but uh, it essentially takes two people. No one really needs to be out on the bridge deck. So in terms of safety, having folks out on the bridge deck, um, uh, this system's completely autonomous. The, essentially, the way that it works, there's a GPS station that's set off on, of, uh, of the side of the bridge, and the rabbit communicates with that GPS station. We set up the boundaries that the rabbit needs to collect data on, and we push a button, and away it goes. Um, it can sense any types, type of obstacles. If it does um, sense an obstacle, it will stop. The person who runs it can then restart it, move it to wherever it needs um, to be moved. Uh, this is just a, a quick photograph showing the facility where it's being developed, which is up in Princeton Junction. The first of the four rabbits is planned to be delivered to FHWA late October, so in about a month from now. The platform for the second one has arrived, so they're working on that. So over about a 10-month period, we'll be receiving all four of the rabbits, which works out really well because by that time, our data collection contract should be in place. The four rabbits will be available for us to then start collecting data on a national basis on untreated uh, bridge decks. Um, and again, the legacy data mining, I talked a little bit about that. I wanna, I wanna take some time and talk a little bit about the bridge portal. That's probably where I'm gonna spend most of my time today because I'm gonna give you a demonstration of the portal. Um, the bridge portal went live almost a year ago. It was, sept I think it was September 30th last year. Um, you have access to it in various ways as a uh, state, state DOT person, you can gain access to the portal um, through what is called UPACs. And, if, and I'm not going to go into specifics today about how you get access. If it's something you're interested in, by all means, contact me, contact Kareem. Kareem will get the information to me. I will get the information to you. What I do want to describe are the different ways that someone can access the portal. Um, Obviously, because of security reasons, we have to make sure that we have the infrastructure built into the portal so that we can limit access to certain types of data to certain populations, let's say. So we have the ability for general public to come in and register for the portal. Um, someone from general public, when they do that, they can gain access to um, 
essentially NBI data within their home state. In other words, what the phone number that they use, the area code essentially describes their home state and they will gain access to uh, essentially NBI data and limited other data within that home state. As a government employee, you, for myself being with FHWA, my ID that I have here, this gives me access to, to this system called UPAX. It's User Profile Access Control System. It's really just a system that's there that allows someone to log into um, an FHWA server. It's a government, it's a secure server. In order to do that, um, someone who does not have one of these, which is probably most of the folks in the room, you just have to go through a process of um, obtaining credentials. What I've heard from many people who've already done it, it's not a lengthy process. I can send um, information out to you, a URL that will describe what you need to do. ORC is essentially a third party uh, company that pro provides credentialing to government employees. In other words, they will do a back background check and a couple of other things. Once you obtain those credentials, you can get into the portal. Um, I would suggest going that route because as a government employee, you won't have the limitations placed on your um, access that someone from the general public would. So um, that's really all I wanna say about access. Uh, the portal is up and running today on um, an FHWA server. What I am going to show you today, however, is the next version of the portal, which is currently, as I'm here today, they're working on deploying that behind the FHWA server. So I thought it was more appropriate to show you all where we are today rather than where we were a year ago. Um, also, later in 2017, we plan to come out with version two of the portal, which will have even more enhancements than I'm gonna show you today. Um, so let me talk about some of those enhancements. We've done a lot of improvements to the search module. Probably the biggest change in the search module is that it now allows the ability to search, to set up a query using and and or. Before it was just this and this and this and this. Now it could be this and this and this and this or this and this or this. So having that ability to have and or really opens up um, a lot of other opportunity to discover information. Um, also, search using an Excel file. Many times you may have a listing of structure numbers Currently, you would have to come in here and enter every one of those structure numbers in to pull up all of the data for all of those structures. So we put in the ability that if you have those structure numbers in an Excel file, you can just import that Excel file and it'll use that Excel file as a query. So that it makes it a, a whole lot faster. Um, we have uh, developed and implemented, which is being deployed, as I said, right now, uh, complete support for uh, NBE data. Currently, I believe we only have uh, NBE data from Oregon and California, and that was at special request by the LTBP program. Um, they were willing, they, they have been collecting data for a number of years and they were willing to provide that information to us. So I'm gonna show you some of the capability with the portal um, actually utilizing some of the NBE data. We just very recently implemented environmental data for bridges. We haven't necessarily gotten to the point where with all of these various different types of data where really we, we can fuse that data and look at all of it at one time, where we are, we're working towards that, but where we are is having the ability, for instance, to look at uh, NBI condition ratings and ADT and ADTT and uh, environmental data all on one page in a graphic for instance, so it, it does give you quite a bit of information. Um, and we've done a lot of work on the user enhancement, um, quite, uh, quite a bit of improvement to the map page, which I'll show all of this to you. One of the things that um, I asked the contractor uh, 
to develop for our map page, which I think the map page is probably one of the um, greatest features of the port portal, which again, I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Um, one of the things that I asked them to develop currently, or, or I guess in the, in the current version that's up um, on an FHWA server now, you can uh, draw a rectangular region and keep the bridges within that region or keep the bridges outside of that region and the same thing with a circular region. Very helpful. However, when we were doing some work a couple of years ago uh, with weathering, with some research that we were involved with uh, in weathering steel, we wanted to look as an example at certain bridges within a certain distance of a coastline. And so I asked the uh, contractor to develop a feature where you can actually go in and draw on the map, follow the coastline and draw a line, and then tell how far you want to offset that line, 10 miles, and, you, and it'll pick up every bridge within 10 miles of the coast. So there's lots and lots of, lots of great features. Um, as you are all probably very aware, many times the bridge location gets coded incorrectly. Um, we have a mapping feature that essentially uses Google Maps. So if we have the latitude and longitude and bring it up in Google Maps and you look at a street view and it's not actually at the right location, we can actually go in and change it within our database. And then at the end of the year, we can provide a report then back to the individual states that will describe which of those bridges, the location on those bridges were coded incorrectly so that potentially they could be uh, changed. Um, we're also working, I won't be able to demonstrate this, this today, but we're also working on timelines for, here I have bridge reinforcement. We're, we're working on timelines for various items, not just bridge reinforcement. Um, we're also working with, well, we're working with the concrete industry, with the steel industry to look at or, or to help us to find how materials and material specifications have changed over time and developing a timeline for that. For understanding bridge performance from a research perspective, it's very important to have that background understanding. What materials are we talking about? What specifications were used for those materials when they were put in a bridge? So it's important for us to understand that. In addition to the, the industries, we're also working with it, all of the uh, states and developing timelines for each state in terms of bridge design specifications, um, uh, uh, all of those types of things. So uh, a lot of very valuable information. Um, we also have, and I, I'm not, a, I saw this just the other day, I'm not 100% sure where, where this, um, this is actually implemented within the portal, uh, but We've developed the ability for an individual, someone working for an individual state to obtain a report for all of the bridges within their state. And it's a very thorough report. However, it's only available to people who have that government access and within that state. In other words, another state won't have access to, to some other state's information. So we do have the ability to um, break it down that way. So uh, what I'd like to do is, if this will work, let's see. Um, you, I think you get your best experience of the portal using Google Chrome. Um, early on when we deployed it about a year ago, especially for folks with FHWA, we had a, an issue because um, agency-wide, we had an upgraded Internet Explorer, and there were a lot of limitations with Internet Explorer in terms of the mapping feature. So I would say if you're gonna use Internet Explorer, use Internet Explorer 11, use Google Chrome, use Firefox, it works fine in any of those. But with Internet Explorer, make sure you're using at least um, version 11. So um, I'm going to log in very quickly. Now, this is not the typical way that I would log into the portal because I would come into the portal through UPEX using my ID. But again, I'm showing you the version that is currently being deployed, but this is on a server at Rutgers. So give me a moment to log in here. Okay, now, quick question before I get started. How many people in here have even heard of the bridge portal? So, not that many, okay. So this is, this is a really good opportunity for me to be able to show this to you. Um, 
The idea behind the bridge portal was originally and still is to be able to look at bridge performance in a holistic manner. I mean, that's what the long-term bridge performance program is all about. So the bridge portal is essentially a data warehouse with various tools that are, have been developed, that are under development, that will be developed. This is something that we're going to continue to enhance as time goes on. Um, currently, we have NBI data uh, back to, I think it's 1980, maybe it's 92, I'm not sure, 983, um, thank you. We also have NBE data from uh, Oregon and California. As I said, we just recently incorporated um, environmental data. We're working towards incorporating traffic data, basically anything out there that, that could have an impact on our understanding of bridge performance, we're gonna be working towards incorporating within the portal. Um, so what I'd like to do is just go through a few things here, um, especially since there's a lot of folks who have never seen it. You don't need any kind of manual to use the portal, which is something that's great. Over here on the right side, you can see these boxes. If I were to click on any of these boxes, so if I click on welcome is up at the top, if I click on the next one, I can essentially just go down this page. You can see the boxes on the right scrolling as well. This is sort of an online tutorial. It tells you every single thing currently that the bridge portal will do. So, um, you know, if you come in here and click, there's two different ways that you can search. You can search with a simple search or you can search with an advanced search. And clicking on each one of these, it just shows you what the simple and advanced searches look like. Most of the things on the portal are very intuitive. So you probably wouldn't even need to go through what's on this page right here. Um, one other thing that I do want to point out, over here, there's a feedback button that's implemented throughout the entire bridge portal. If you run across a problem, we certainly want to know. If you have an idea for a feature that you'd like to see implemented, we certainly would like to know. So that's why we've placed that there. Um, what I'd like to do is to show you very quickly the um, simple search and what the simple search and the advanced search looks like, but for the brevity of time, I have some searches that I've actually saved that I'll just pull up and, and show to you. But we can go in here. Um, one of the great things about, about the portal is, as an example, when you're working with anything from NBI, you don't have to remember the codes for anything. You can just simply start typing and it'll pick up, pick, pick up um, that specific code, or in this case, for the simple search, you're limited to nine specific data items. You can search, you can set up a query based on those nine items. The nine items that are shown here are the default nine items. You can change those nine items very easily by going into um, the settings. Under the advanced search, it's not limited. You can search for as many of the different items as you want to. Um, I'll show you the settings very quickly. So under the settings, you can see username, email, changing your password. The changing your password probably isn't implemented within the version that's in within UPACS because you don't have the ability to just change it. Um, uh, you can manage any filters that you've saved. Um, I'm going to talk in a few minutes about when you do run a query, it automatically comes up with a summary page. That summary page is actually customizable. You can come right here. It's under um, beta testing right now. That's why it says customize summary page beta. But we are working at, at um, uh, summarizing or customizing that. So you can, for the simple search, Again, here are the nine items that are listed in that simple search. You can get rid of any of these and add any others you want in there for it to default to, but you're limited to nine items. Um, when you see the results, this selected result column shows the columns that will show up in a tabular format. You can put as many in there. If you don't put them in here, you can actually add columns in after you've run a query. Um, one other thing that is very nice is we can switch between uh, SI and um, English system of units. So 
Um, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a filter that I had run before, and you can see it takes me immediately into um, this summary page. I'm going to go back to the actual filter so you can see what we just did. What I wanted to look at is I wanted to pull out all of the data for uh, pre-stressed box beams and box girders for the entire country. So I came in here and I said main span materials, pre-stressed concrete, pre-stressed concrete continuous. And I said main span design to include box beam or girders, multiple box beam or girders, single or spread. And uh, you can specify between what years, after what year. So I said after 19, 1940. Um, and I went ahead and ran this search. Now, one thing you'll notice, um, and it is dependent on the uh, internet speed, um, that query was just run on the entire NBI database, 617,000 some odd bridges, and you saw how fast it was. That's one of the things that Rutgers has really worked very, very hard on, is making the software as efficient as possible. It's pretty amazing that it does it that quickly. So this summary page, this is what I was talking about before. You can actually go in and customize this. So it's telling us for that type of bridge, there's 52,000, uh, roughly 52,000 of those bridges nationwide, the cumulative deck area, the average age for all of those bridges, traffic volume, you can see you can switch between truck traffic volume and um, uh, ADT, and this is for all of the bridges combined, number of posted bridges, number of closed bridges, number of scour critical, um, not sure why it's not there, number of unknown foundation. Um, and again, for all of those bridges, uh, the average deck condition rating of all bridges, the uh, superstructure and the substructure, for only those bridges from that quarry that are NHS bridges, as a comparison, the deck super and substructure. Um, and you can also see down at the bottom, uh, there's a wealth of information here that essentially uh, tabularizes a lot of this data. So this is one quick way to look at this information, but it's certainly not the only way. Um, and that's what I want to spend a little time talking about. I'm going to do my best to keep my eye on the time here. Um, so what I did was I clicked off of the summary page and onto the results page. And on the results page, on the top of it, is simply a tabular result of the query that I just ran, those box pre-stressed uh, box girders, both simple and continuous, so for the whole country. Um, you can sort right here. You can, you can actually further filter the, this information right here. If you wanted at this point just to look at these types of structures that were in the state of Kentucky, you could just type in Kentucky here and it would only show you those in Kentucky, but the entire query is still there. It's only filtered out what you told it to filter out. So there's, there's a lot of um, uh, ability to do a lot of different things even once we've run the query. Um, down at the bottom of the page, I'm going to move this up a little bit, uh, very similar to most things that you see, whether on internet or, or other software, you can change the number of items that you see here. We had 52,000 bridges. It's only showing 50 at a time right now. Um, most of the time, you're probably not even going to look at the information there. You're going to use one of these buttons down here. You can export the entire query to Excel to perform further uh, data analysis on it should you want to do that. You can export the results to PDF. You can al also export the results to KML. KML is a format that's used by Google Earth if you wanted to bring all of the information in just into Google Earth. Um, at the bottom of the page, and I'm not going to go into any great detail of what's in the bottom of the page because I can pull this up on a completely separate page. But what this is, is when I hi highlight a particular bridge up in the top of the page, information for that particular bridge shows up down at the bottom of the page. So there's a summary tab, there's an NBI, an NBE tab, historical data, LTBP data, deterioration 
uh, model environmental data. I'm gonna show all of that information to you in a few minutes, but before I do that, I wanna show you the mapping feature. Um, and I'm jumping to that because the reason why I pulled this specific um, query is because when I did this the first time, I saw something very interesting and it took us a little while to figure out exactly what it was. So um, again, what I'm gonna, what I'm attempting to show you here is the mapping feature. Currently we're limited to 150,000 markers on the map that each bridge gets a marker. So we're limited to showing 150,000 bridges. If our query is larger than that, all it means is you're not gonna see all of it right here. So it's taking a little bit of time, I guess, because our internet isn't that fast and, and we do have 52,000 bridges. So let's give it a second here and if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't come up, we'll move on. I promise that it does work, which is maybe a little bit slow here today. I've run this query many times. Very interesting. Okay, there it is. Um, so looking at it that way, you know, that doesn't tell us a whole lot of information, but there's a lot of different things that we can do here. I'm gonna zoom in right here to Indiana and Ohio. And this is where we saw something kind of interesting. And I'm not, when I do these kind of things, I'm not picking on any, any individual state. What I'm, what I'm doing here, and the reason why I, I like to bring this particular uh, filter up is because it demonstrates the ability of discovering information that you never would have been able to discover without using something like the portal. And it's a really simple thing in this case, but it demonstrates that. So what I'm gonna do is show you some of the mapping features here. Um, you, we can change the color of the marker, and I'm gonna change the color of the marker so that it re represents the deck condition. And immediately, you should probably see something that looks pretty odd here. We have a, 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 a pretty clear delineation of the state of Indiana. And, and um, it looks like um, their decks are in worse condition than the surrounding states. Very odd. Anybody wanna venture a guess as to what you see here? It's kind of interesting. Nobody? Nope, you're never gonna guess. And the state of Indiana, from what I learned, every year we have a meeting, which we just had last week, with um, our state coordinators group. We have um, an individual from each state, a highway agency or DOT, that comes to a meeting every year. So I had the opportunity to talk with the folks from Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and I found out what this, the situation is here. In Indiana, for this type of bridge, they use asphalt overlays, and they cannot, um, they cannot evaluate their decks from above, and so they do it from below. Now, in a box section, particularly if it were a uh, precast adjacent box beam, I don't know how they would be able to do that anyway. But if it's a box, cast in place box girder, they probably get inside. But the reason why you're seeing this difference is because they're looking at the deck from the underside rather than the top side. Just kind of interesting. It's not any, any grand discovery, but it was interesting to me when I first started playing around with the portal that I saw this and it made me think, huh, I wonder what's going on here. So it just really demonstrates that you can learn a lot of things with the information that's in here. Um, let me show you a few other things here. We can actually not only change the color of the marker for each bridge, we can change the size of the marker and have the size of the marker also indicate something. So I can come in here and I can say that the size of the marker indicates the uh, calculated average daily truck traffic. And I'll make it a little bit larger. And you can see, we can zoom in here and it's not immediately apparent. It's more apparent when you get in some of the really high density areas, which I kind of have lost sight of here. Maybe it there, makes a little, little more sense to make it a little bit bigger. But the point is with every marker, each marker can indicate two pieces of information. The color can indicate one piece of information, the size can indicate another piece of information. Um, uh, lots of different things that we can do. Uh, just to give you an example, 
I also looked at one time at the I-95 corridor. And if we mapped the I-95 corridor in the same way, you'll start to see, well, if we're looking at deck condition and we then dive into a little further and maybe look at some of the environmental conditions and we start looking at the traffic data, we may be able to, to eventually draw some conclusions about that. So you can see here what looks like just a line, it's actually not a line. This is all individual bridges all the way along the I-95 corridor. Now, um, what I'd like to do is to, in order to demonstrate a couple of other features, I am going to, there is, um, at the end of the list, you can see starting up here, this is all NBI information currently in the database, all of the various codes, but at the end of this list, there are some additional things in here um, that, have, that we've calculated or that we've put in here for research purposes. Any bridges that are LTBP cluster bridges, corridor bridges, um, any bridges that we're actually testing and the data being put in here. Um, the one that I want to bring up is this one. Um, I'm going to just simply pull up all of the bridges that are in our database where we have NBE data for. And the reason why I'm doing it is just to simply show you some of the functionality um, of the portal with respect to, um, I have to put that there first. Um, and you'll see uh, we have um, approximately 9,000 bridges with NBE data. And just so you can see where most of them are. And again, this is because um, in working with our state coordinators, we worked uh, closely with California and Oregon. Um, I think we might even have, have some in Washington. Um, uh, I think what I will do, since it's taken a little while for it to show it up on the map, I clicked on it right when it showed it there. That's okay. Um, Now, this is going to take a second, too. Okay. Uh, so um, these are the various bridges that uh, we have NBE data for. One of the things that I'd like to do, because I know some of um, what we have uh, in Oregon, I know of some of it, I'm just going to, um, I just reversed the order so I can see the Oregon bridges at the top. Now, as I said before, with the results page, you can see the structure number is actually a hot link. And I can click on that structure number, and it brings up the exact same tabs that were on the previous page. It's just um, larger. So that's really what I want to I show you. So there's um, some basic summary information. Um, any documents or images or field data that we may have from the LTBP program, uh, inspection information, a map showing where the structure actually is. Um, information pertaining to NBI. So you can see over here, all of the NBI information here is here for the particular bridge that I'm looking at. You can filter these attributes right here. This is also broken up. Um, if you, right now we're looking at all of the NBI information. We can look at just general information, anything dealing with age and service, anything dealing with structure, load rating, and so on. So for instance, if I click on load rating, it's only showing me those NBI uh, uh, data that relate to load rating. So I'll go back to all. Um, over here, last available um, inspection data. Here in NBE, and this is the reason why I wanted to bring this up, because we don't have NBE data for that many bridges currently in the portal. Um, but I wanted, what I wanted to show you is that we have the infrastructure built into the portal to support searching and evaluating NBE data. Um, so you can see here for this particular element, when you click on a particular element, depending on what element data we have, the uh, plots down at the bottom change, and you can see here that what is um, the purple dashed line is the aggregate of your condition states one through four, and you can also, should you choose to, you can also change the individual weights for the condition states um, to come up with that aggregate should you not want to use the standard one 
0.66 or one two thirds and one third. Um, so again, lots of great information in terms of NBE. We also have NBE history, historical data. If we have that historical data, this is NBI condition data. Um, and you can see in green, this is channel data for this particular bridge, obviously over water. Actually, this is, my guess is this is a culvert, not a bridge. This is showing in blue. So I didn't necessarily mean to pick a culvert, but that's okay. Um, what, I, what I do wanna point out is this dashed line. What the dashed line is, whether it's a bridge or whether it's a culvert, um, give, this dashed line gives you a lot of information. Um, if in this particular instance, it's going out to the quarry that I've run, and it's saying for all of the same type of bridge that has the same age, what is the average NBI condition rating for all of those? So that you can compare the average of all the structures of the same age to the one that you're looking at. So that's a pretty powerful thing to be able to do. I'm thinking, oh environmental data, here's where, and this is again where I said, we have a lot of this data in here, but again, this is developmental. As we move forward, we're continually enhancing. We haven't necessarily gotten to the point where we're fusing everything together so you get the picture of everything all at one time. That's gonna be a pretty complicated thing to be able to do, but we are working towards that. Um, but you can see here, uh, light green or freeze thaw cycles, dark green or snowfalls. So you can use this information um, along with perhaps some of the historical data to draw some conclusions out of it. Now, in addition, if this were a bridge that were an LTVP bridge, we'd see information here for that. Um, there isn't a deterioration curve for this because the one that I unfortunately chose was a culvert. So let's see. Let's try that one. Maybe it doesn't like that one either. No, oh, there it is. I think our internet connection is just a little bit slow. Um, so that one does not have a deterioration curve either. Uh, those that do have it, the deterioration curve is in here um, for the, those bridges that we have the information for in order to run that deterioration curve. Um, however, I do want to just spend a little bit of time talking about that. The long-term bridge performance program, we're also working on, I just have a few minutes left. We're also working on data-driven deterioration modeling. Um, and one of the things that we've worked on over the past couple of years is to develop a probabilistic model for deterioration modeling that can essentially utilize any type of data. It can use NBI data, it can use NBE data, it can use NDE data that we collect in the field, it could use visual inspection data, it could essentially utilize any and every type of data that we want it to. But the interesting thing about it is, Typically in the past with deterioration modeling, you pick a type of model, uh, uh, for instance, a Weibull model or a Markov model, and you pick that model and you see how well that model fits your data. And if it fits, great, you can use it. Well, what we've been working on is the ability to actually utilize data that's collected to evaluate many different models at one time by providing an initial weight to each model and allowing the data to update the weights, which essentially tells us, well, we may have 10 different models. Maybe these two over here fit the data and these two over here fit the data, but the others don't. So it's really, um, uh, it's something that's never been done before. Again, like many things with LTBP in terms of the tools that we're developing, it's in developmental stages, but uh, we are working on it and one of the things that is extremely important and one of the reasons I'm bringing it up here, one of the things that's extremely important for us in terms of validating any type of modeling like this is as best we can, and I know this is a tough one, is to collect um, maintenance data to collect information, especially here in the Northeast on 
if we can get this information. Um, how much salt is applied to the roadways and maybe extrapolate from that for a bridge? So any of these types of actions, if we can get data and information on that, it's really going to help the program. So that's the one plea that I will make. Um, I do have other things that I was going to talk about, but this is really the primary one. Um, there's a few other features in the bridge portal, but again, uh, most of it is self-explanatory. Um, if you are interested in accessing the portal and you don't have information on it, by all means, uh, either contact Kareem, contact me directly, Kareem will get in touch with me and I will do my best to get you, um, your account set up and get you going. Thank you very much for your time.